Now normally I start with the background or a base color, but not today. Today we'll be doing something a little different. So let's start off with transferring our images to our canvas using a sheet of carbon or graphite paper. You can find carbon paper at your local office supply store or by clicking the affiliate link below. Tape your sheet of carbon or graphite paper, shiny side down, behind Winnie Stencil, since we'll be tracing her first. Then take a basic ballpoint pen and begin tracing around the image following the lines. You want to press firmly, but not so much as to tear the paper or damage the canvas beneath. Then go back and trace over all the red areas of her hair. These are the parts that sort of look like flames. Don't forget to trace around her lips and teeth. Carefully peel off the carbon paper and the stencil. It should look like this. Now move over to the right and do the exact same thing for Mary. Finally, go over to Sarah's stencil and repeat the process. When you've traced all three witches, your canvas should look like this. Now don't throw away your stencils, you'll need them as reference guides. You can tape them to your canvas as I have done, or just keep them somewhere nearby. Now let's start painting. Load a number one round brush with the jack-o'-lantern color. This is the lighter orange. And fill in Winifred's hair in the spots where the lighter orange is shown on the stencil. After you filled in the lighter color, Mix a bit of primary red into the harvest orange to get a reddish orange color. Use this color to fill in the rest of the parts of her hair. Then I want you to take that same reddish orange and outline all of her hair with a number zero liner. This will give her hair a bit more dimension and really make that lighter orange color pop. Let's move on to her sister Mary. Clean your number one round brush and load it with wild grapes. And then fill in all the purple parts of her hair. Check your stencil to make sure you're filling in the right parts when it comes to her swirls. Once you're done with the purple, Load your brush with Mars Black and fill in the rest. Then outline the whole thing with Mars Black using your number zero liner. Now we're going to move on over to Sarah and fill in her hair with golden yellow using our number one round. As I was painting, I discovered the king's gold was too similar to the golden yellow. So to remedy this, you'll need to mix a bit of your harvest orange into your king's gold to fill in the remaining parts of her hair. I also want you to use this darker gold color to trace all the lines in her hair. Now step back and take a look at your painting. It already looks so great and you're only halfway done. Now I want you to grab a clean brush like your number zero liner and load it with primary red. Then carefully fill in Winifred's iconic lips. Then 
Draw a thin black line between her two front teeth using another brush. Slide on over to Mary and fill in her crooked lips with that same primary red. Add a line between her teeth and then give her a single black mole by dipping the back of your brush into Mars Black and then carefully pressing it to your canvas. Move over to the left, fill in Sarah's lips, and then give her a mole as well. Now step back and take a look at your painting. You can easily stop here and be done. The painting looks great as is, but if you're up for it, keep watching because it's going to look even better when we get to the end. If you've ever watched Hocus Pocus, you know that the Sanderson sisters make a potion. So we're going to paint them a cauldron, complete with a bubbling green brew. So I want you to load a 1 4th inch angled brush with Mars Black and then drag a line across the lower center portion of your canvas, just below Winifred. The ends of the line should curve upwards. It's going to sort of look like a black canoe. Keep going over this line with Mars Black, widening the sides of the canoe each time. This is how we make the rim of the cauldron. Once you finish the rim, it's time to add the bowl part of the cauldron. So just draw two short vertical lines connecting the rim to the bottom edge of your canvas. The lines should curve outward. Then fill in the cauldron with Mars Black. Dip your brush into a bit of titanium white and go over the rim of the cauldron. Do this while the black is still wet so the colors blend together. Then add some white to the sides of the cauldron and blend those in as well. We are adding white to the places where the light would hit the cauldron, which would be the top of the rim and the rounded sides of the cauldron. You're going to want to leave the center of the cauldron bowl black as well as the line right underneath the rim. These will be the shadowed places, the places where the light doesn't hit. After I stepped back and looked at my painting through the camera, I saw that my cauldron was off center. I easily fix this by fattening up the left side of the rim and cauldron, and then going back in with the white. Once you're happy with your cauldron, step away and let it dry. After the cauldron's dry, take a half inch round stencil brush. This is a really hard bristled brush with short hairs and dip it into one of your greens, either your parakeet or lime sherbet. Then press your stencil brush straight onto your canvas and give it a bit of a back and forth twist to create your first cauldron bubble. Do this again and again, each time switching between the light and dark green to add more bubbles to your cauldron. Make sure to let some of the bubbles hang off the sides and ends of the pot. Once you've got all your bubbles in place, I want you to take that same brush and dip it in some of that golden yellow, this is the lighter yellow, and go over a few of your green bubbles using that same back and forth twist motion. Once again, this is just going to add another layer of dimension to our painting. Once you're done with the yellow, set that brush aside. Next, I want you to grab your one and a half inch flat brush and load it with titanium white. And then begin filling in all the areas around the three witches and the cauldron. This is all the parts of the canvas where we have not painted. 
you don't have to get a small brush and go around their hair precisely. We're sort of creating a vignette. We're just framing what we've already painted. I also don't want you to fill in their faces. Leave those with just the canvas as the background. So when you're done, it should look like this. So immediately, while the white paint is still wet, I want you to take a mop brush. This sort of looks like a makeup brush or a blush brush. And then begin dabbing a mixture of your antique gold and Inca gold all over the white areas of your painting. I want you to apply these golds using this quick dabbing motion. This is going to give your canvas a textured look. Add even more gold around the edges and corners of your painting, and also around each witch to give her a vignetted frame. If there are any spots where the gold is too heavy, just keep dabbing at it to soften the look. Now for our final step, we're just going to go back in with that green stencil brush and add a few more bubbles here and there. So I'm just going to add two over here below Mary and one over here below Sarah and three right about here above Winifred. Now don't forget to go over the green with a bit of that golden yellow. And then sign your painting using that same green or whatever color you like. Now let's step back and take a look at the finished product. As you can see, the colors we use for Sarah and Winnie's hair are much more vibrant than the ones in the stencils. The purple we use for Mary's hair is a bit darker and bluer than the original, but it still stands out from the black and I think it's a nice contrast to the brighter colors in the painting. And here's our Hocus Pocus painting hung on the wall. I think it's the perfect way to change up your decor for Halloween.